Hi, I'm Michelle Segrist, and welcome to the Factory of the Future podcast. This podcast is inspired by my three-volume book series on the evolution of modern manufacturing. Each episode features engaging conversations with game-changing experts discussing the processes and innovations that are changing the landscape of modern manufacturing. Thank you so much for listening. Please do me a favor and leave me a five-star rating on iTunes and take just a couple of seconds to leave a review. And then go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now so you don't miss a single episode. Today, I'm very happy to welcome Frank Bannum as my expert guest. Frank is the aftermarket sales manager at Flotweg Separation Technology. He is also a retired professional hockey player, which I think is really interesting, and we're going to talk a little bit about that today. But our focus is going to be on his expertise in aftermarket services. We're going to explore the future of the aftermarket, as well as identify the differences between pirate service centers and OEM service centers. We will explore why aftermarket matters, and we'll also discuss the importance of maintenance as part of the aftermarket focus. I'm really excited about this conversation, but first I want to tell you just a little bit about Flotweg and its aftermarket and repair services. Keeping the tradition of superior expertise, accessibility, inventory, and the ability to respond to any issue immediately, Flotweg extends its world-class aftermarket parts and services with a new 15,000-square-foot customer care center in Ontario, Canada, conveniently located just minutes from Toronto International Airport. Focusing on the customer's success, including process reliability, greater cost efficiency, and unparalleled customer service, Flotweg Canada will support Canadian customers with the high standards set by the U.S. aftermarket facility in Independence, Kentucky. Flotweg's multiple locations throughout the U.S. provide immediate access to service and support. Whatever the issue, it is structured to immediately dispatch technical experts and all the parts and services equipment required to be at any site within 24 to 48 hours. According to Flotweg customers in the U.S. who have experienced the advantage of an in-house expert aftermarket service, response time makes all the difference when production issues arise. This is why Flotweg has made the investment to provide the same level of aftermarket service in Canada. The team of experts work together to provide superior service, whether it's spare parts, field service, or in-house repairs and refurbishments. For more information, you can head on over to www.flotweg.com. A link is in the show notes. And now, without further delay, I am real excited to welcome Frank to the podcast so that we can dive into a deeper discussion about the future of the aftermarket. So welcome to the podcast, Frank. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate you having me on. Of course. I'm really excited about our conversation. But before we get started, could you just take a few minutes to tell us a little about yourself and your background and experience and tell us why you're an expert on aftermarket service and repair? Yes. So I grew up in a small town in Canada, located in Alberta. The name of the town was Calhoun. It was a small population town of uh, 75 to 100 people. Oh, Um, really? That is small. Yeah, it was very uh, family oriented community. A lot of hardworking people in our town that worked on the oil pipelines and gas pipelines in Alberta, as you know, is a very popular in that area. And at a young age, I did some of that. But of course, as you know, in Canada, everything's frozen six months of the year. So a lot of that was spent on ice. And I, I grew up playing hockey. It was a, a game that I fell in love with, obviously, and pursued my dreams of one day playing in the NHL. And playing professional hockey. That's pretty cool. You told me once that when you were in high school, you were interested in mechanics and welding and things like this. Is that part of what led you to a career with Flotweg? Yeah. Well, so my dad around our town, he was the master of all trades. He did everything, ran the arena, he fixed everything. If if people had furnaces out, he was going there to fix furnaces. He was usually the guy in our town that you called to. So at a young age, I was traveling, doing that stuff with them, and became very interested in it. As I uh, went to high school, did the welding courses and mechanics courses, and it was just something that, that always interested me, interests me, and I had a passion for. 
uh, obviously my, my number one passion was hockey, but I had this, this other passion as well. And it was, it would probably have been something I would have got into sooner in my life. Things didn't turn out the way they did down my hockey path. Yeah, I think your hockey background is really interesting, and I think it's worth spending some time talking about it. I'm curious to know how your hockey skills translate to what you do for your customers in aftermarket services. Yeah, well, any professional sport you play, you know, there's a lot of pressures that are involved with that. You know, you're always looked upon as a, as an individual and as a team on kind of the success you're having. So, and you're always in a lot of pressure situations with, you know, sometimes 18,000 people all have eyes on you and what you're doing. At a, at a young age, I, I learned to deal with, with those pressures and adversity that, that you go through. It's helped me uh, in my position now with Flatwick. Yeah. And also, I'm sure any, anyone who plays sports of any kind learns how to work on a team, learns how to work with other people and help all the, the moving parts work together. Does uh, your experience working on a team and work ethic that it takes to be an athlete, has that helped you with what you do with Flatwick? Yeah, absolutely. Here at Flatwick, we, you know, that's something we pride ourselves in. We have a great team of people here and in professional sports and, and hockey, if you want to have individual success, it's got to come through team success. Learning that part of um, the game, playing as a team and, and working as a team. Let's carry it over here to, into Flatwig and has, has been a great transition for me coming from professional sports and to working here with Flatwig. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. The, explain to us exactly what you do for Flatwig. We know what your title is, but what what does that mean? What are you? What is your role there? Our aftermarket sales manager here. There's two of us. We have, we have quite a few customers, around seven to eight hundred throughout North America. And in in those customers, with those customers, you know, they may have one or two of, of our separation machines. So there's you know always service and maintenance that needs to be done with those machines. That's something that us sales managers will, will travel out on to site and, and help them with the, any of the service or maintenance or, you know, or even provide new technologies that Flatwigs come out with that they're going to benefit from as far as saving and, and money or any energy savings. It's, it's kind of a variety of things that we do. We just, at the end of the day, the most important thing is, is our customers are happy and the machines are running well and they have good process in their plants. So let's talk a little bit about what are some of the traditional aftermarket services that companies like Flatwick offer, and also explain why aftermarket services are so important for the customers who purchase rotating equipment. It's a very vital part of their process in these plants and with their customers. If our machine goes down, uh, you know, sometimes it could be in, in the heart of a plant and the whole plant's down. When things like that happen, they're losing money. And a lot of the operations, not all of them, but there's a lot that it's, you know, 24-7 operation. And these, these this is mostly essential businesses that we're dealing with. So it's important that they're up and running and the machine's running well and, and there's no issues that puts them behind the eight ball by being shut down. But, you know, we need to provide that service for them. That's something that we pride ourselves on here is, you know, we we got the capabilities of dispatching any of our technicians uh, at any time, customer care service that if there are any issues that arise on a, on a Saturday or Sunday, they can always get a hold of us. And that's something that I think separates us from our competitors here in North America. One thing is certain, equipment goes down. If it doesn't go down today, it might go down tomorrow. I mean, even the most reliable equipment out there, when it's running 24-7 in a lot of these plants, and we're talking about a lot of different industries, it does go down. And what the end user needs is to get it back up. That's the most important thing. And that's where the aftermarket services come into play. And Isn't that correct? Yeah, that's correct. We try to help our customers out with preventing that. Don't want them in that situation because as we talked before, it's a pressure situation. So Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so and, the game's and, on the line. You have to get yeah. back. you got to <laughs> yeah. get the A team back in, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 You gotta get the but, starters off the bench and back on back on yeah. the on the playing field <laughs> if we want to keep with that sports analogy. So I know that Flotweg offers field service as well as in shop service. Can you explain yeah. the differences? What, what's the difference between the two? We have a, a full field of field technicians, process technicians, and then we have our shop technicians. These are all trained Flatwig employees that 
have been trained, you know, on the machines and in rebuilding machines. And as you know, with centrifuges, it's machines that are spinning anywhere from 3,000 to maybe 10 to 12,000 RPM with product and, and different things being fed into them. There is going to be some maintenance stuff that needs to be done. We provide two different uh, options for our customers. There's a field service where, you know, we'll dispatch one of our field technicians. He'll travel out to the customer site and dismantle the whole whole machine, take everything apart, inspect it, and rebuild it and run it off and make sure everything's in check, It's everything's running well, and there's no issues to be concerned of down the road. The only difference between the field and the shop is in the field, we obviously can't balance the bowl or scroll. Our machines are anywhere from 3,000 to 5,000 pounds, so they're obviously big machines. Oh, yeah. Those are two things that we don't do is, is balance the bowl and scroll, obviously, in the field. And majority of the time, we don't rebuild our SIM gears that are on the machines. With that being said, if they send it into our shop, a customer can send their machine into our shop. And that is a lot more thorough process than it is in the field. You know, the field mm-hmm. service is a two to three day service for the customer, get them back up and running, get the machine all re- rebuilt in the shop. When we get the machines in, we dismantle everything and clean all the large parts, small parts with a caustic solution, make sure we have all those impurities out of there. And then we have uh, inspectors here at our facility. They'll inspect every little piece on the machine, make sure everything's in spec and all the tolerances are in spec. After that, if, if there's anything that needs to be chromed or reworked, or brought back into what our tolerances are. Then we'll do that here in-house. Balance the bowl and scroll here. We have our Schneck balancing machines. That We have one for balancing the bowl, one for balancing the scroll. And then we rebuild the gears here on site. We have our guys here that do those. They do anywhere from two to 300 of those a year. And those are very technical, dismantling those and taking those apart. It's, it's a part where if, if you're going to rebuild it you want to do it right so that's the difference between us and these pirate shops and and third-party shops is they don't have the measurements the tolerances of each unit on our machine you know there's we've what i've seen down out there some customers will try to save a dollar not going oem or using a third party and then i wanted to ask you about this i hear a lot about this pirate or third-party companies. So I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, tell us a little more about that and explain the difference between that kind of operation and an OEM operation. They basically try to provide the same service that we provide. And some of them use not our OEM parts, which in some cases could be very dangerous. And you think of a machine, three to 5,000 machines spinning at three to 5,000 RPMs and something goes wrong, that's, you know, that's not good. So it's that's why when we you know we bring it into the shop when it when it leaves our shop it's basically a brand new machine again everything's in, in spec and and done right and there's no safety issues or no issues moving down the road where these pirate shops they don't have all the measurements and, mm-hmm. and the tolerances on everything on our machines so it can be dangerous but it is obviously they're getting better at what they're doing as well but at the end of the day i tell customers you know if if i buy a mercedes car i'm not going to take it to the pinto shop to have it well be, sure yeah. you know service it's just I mean, you know, and that's, that's a good the, analogy yeah that makes yeah. sense yeah. yeah but do you think that most of the end users that you work with are they aware like do they even know it when they send it to a service shop are they aware that it's it's not exactly the same parts or the same kind of equipment. Do you think they're educated uh, about that? I think some are, some aren't. Some do it just to try and save some money here or there. Yeah. And, and they will, you know, in, in, in the early years. But, uh, you know, then you see down the road that they pay for it more and then some. They usually, it, the machine is so far out of spec and, and so many issues that once it comes into our shop, you know, then they'll get call us. It's like, well, it's not working now. And we've been rebuilding it through this pirate shop or third party, you know, and then we have to bring everything back into spec and, and rebuild everything or change parts. You know, that money they saved early on, they end up paying for it down the road. Um, I'm sure that and, on these pirate shops, though, I mean, how do they know? They probably don't have a logo that has like a skull and crossbones, you know, black flag <laughs> that says this is a pirate shop. I mean, how do they know the difference? The customers or? Yeah. How does the customer know 
whether it's you know it's a legit place to to get their equipment serviced. Yeah, well, yeah, it's you know inside the machine. Once the machine's all rebuilt and you know all the all the multiple different parts inside the machine, they're not seeing anything inside. So, yeah, right. Yeah. You know, they're just they're getting the whole rotating assembly back and they're installing it and running it. They wouldn't know what the bearings are that were used or any of the any of the other little items. Sure. Or even yeah. larger for that case in in some machines until something fails and then they're they're calling us. Yeah. I mean, in in the short run, I guess they could save a little bit of money by going that route, but in the long run, do they really save money if it just breaks down again? Yeah, not in the long run. No, they're going to pay for it and then some. It's yeah, their like Mercedes, their Mercedes yeah. <laughs> is going to be on the side of the road somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And not going to be able and to get to You know, our, 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 our machines, you know, I've, I've been out at some customer sites and these were machines from 1985 and they're still running them 24-7. So if the proper maintenance is done and customers doing all the protocols and all the recommendations that we advise them to do, they just keep on running. It's, it's like a Mercedes, right? It just... They'll run forever. That's good to know. That's a good selling uh, point, I'm sure. So, Frank, I talk to a lot of end users in my line of work, and they always tell me every time, it never fails, that the number one thing they look for in a supplier is response time. And especially when equipment fails, and we know the equipment's going to fail at, at some point. So, can you explain why response time is so important to these end users, why it matters so much? If our machine goes down or they're having issues, then it can shut the whole plant down. That's going to cause even bigger issues within their plant, just our machine being down, right? There's there's other items or machinery in the Mm -hmm. plant that could go down as well. But that's one thing that just talking with customers and and just from being on site. And and another thing that we pride our on is is our response time, right? Mm Because we want them up and running so they can contact us at any time and we're going to get back with them immediately we basically it's it's almost like a 24-hour hotline the worst thing for our customers if if, if something goes down and it's they can't get a hold of someone for two three days um, yeah. which is you know that's what separates us as well from our our competitors I've heard stories out there where it's you know they can't get parts they can't get a hold of one, anyone nobody gets back to them and we're the total opposite yeah. Um, well, when you respond to uh, someone's request, at least that lets them know that you're on it, that you're trying to come up with a solution, that you're working for them and helping them. So even just communicating with them, I'm sure gives them peace of mind that at least something is happening. But when someone just doesn't respond, that's that's horrible. That's bad business, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. And it's, yeah, it's. And, and you hear about it. It does happen out there. It does happen where they just can't get anybody to come in. I've talked to a lot of end users who say that, where they just, they never heard back from that customer. So they just quit using their equipment. Yeah. I, and I, I can understand a, it, why that's important. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's important piece for us on the aftermarket side that we pride ourselves in and, and make sure, you know, they've invested that money into our, our machines that um, those machines continue to run and, and don't cause issues within their in their process or, or their plant. Right. We'd, we'd be happier if it was someone else's equipment, not ours. <laughs> yeah, sure. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've heard you say before that keeping the machines running is just the biggest, That that's the biggest thing. The sale doesn't end with the sale. That's not when the partnership ends for you with your customers. Yeah. And that's, you know, how we have things set up here is flatway because we, we have our aftermarket. That's the biggest part of our team actually in North America is on the aftermarket side. You know, we want to make sure that we're always providing that for our customers and trying to be pro more proactive than reactive because sure. the last thing you want is have to be reactive. It's, it's kind of like professional hockey. You got to be able to anticipate to be a successful player or a team. And that's, you know, same thing what we do here is we are proactive and, and anticipate things for our customers. That's good. And that that's a great segue to the next question I had for you. As we continue to discuss the future of manufacturing on this podcast, we talk about it every single week. I want to talk a little bit with you about the importance of maintenance because you just said that the maintenance has something to do with it and you want to be proactive. So what are some innovative predictive maintenance technologies that are out there that are being used right now that are important for your customers to know about? All of our customers is 
different site from site, even though it could be the same process as, as what another customer is running. Right. So we need to uh, adapt to that for that customer. We have our, our guidelines and stuff beforehand. We'll be out on the customer site or talk with them and help them along to put together a good maintenance plan. Because it, as, as we said, I'd said before, we want those machines running. We don't want any issues coming up down the road. Do you give your customers a maintenance plan, like when to change the oil, lubrication plan, you know, guidelines that they should go by to help the machines run longer? Yeah, so we will put that all together. We'll put together all the, the spare parts that they want to have on site and need to have on site just if, if something comes up. Put together a, which comes in all their manuals, but as as you and I know, it's, um, <laughs> uh, you get, I, I don't even read my John Deere manual until I started right. working here. Then I'm like, wow, <laughs> this, this makes sense. But, you know, our, our manuals could be anywhere from 300 pages, so. You know, yeah. are those customers reading those? Notes? So we imp- uh, point out the important details that they should follow. They basically come up with their procedure and maintenance, but it, it's it's based off of our guidelines. At the end, it's it's up to them to follow those. But yeah, there's all ones we have with with oil increasing, rebuild times. It depends on the temperature they're running in their process through the machines, what product they are running through the machines. So then we can guide them off of that. On We need to plan for this every year, year and a half, two years. Uh, we need to have our technician out to rebuild it or we're up on the five-year mark. This is where we need to get the machine back into our facility so we can balance the bowl and scroll, do a real thorough inspection, rebuild the gear, and just keep the machine like new for them the whole time. So they end up like some of our customers who've been running these since 1990, 1985. Is training a part of the aftermarket services that you provide? Like, do you go in and show the end user how to use the equipment? And, you know, what does the training look like? Or do you just say, here's the manual, go read it? (laughs) Or do you, or is there a hands-on approach? Every new startup with a new customer, we have our process technicians that uh, travel to their site and get the machine started up for them. And then we'll do a, we'll do a classroom training with, you know, all operators and maintenance and go through everything, what they need to follow, which guidelines they need to follow, what things they need to be aware of. Did you do the training at the machines? And then after that is after the aftermarket team will come into play. We'll make sure that they're aware of, of the parts that they need to have on site that they want to have on site, planning for those rebuilds. And there'll be times too when we go on site where maybe something has changed in their process or they're looking to improve on it where we'll help them and and guide them that way as well. That's really a good part of the service, I think. You're not just selling them the equipment and then stopping. You're continuing with the relationship beyond delivering the equipment. That's a really nice feature. Frank, what are some of the manufacturing trends that you're seeing out there? What are some of the new innovations or technologies that you're seeing as you go into these different plants of your customers? Well, this obviously varies customer to customer because of the different processes um, that are run site to site. With our Flotway team in Germany, every day they're always working on things to making things better, easier, cheaper on maintenance. We have a, a C series machine now that was designed for better maintenance with less lubrication between maintenance cycles and full machine service. We have some technology that we've come out with. It's for energy savings. These are weir plates that are called recu veins. Oh, yeah, you sure. Know, where I've had customers up in Canada that, that switch these onto their on their machines. They're running eight machines 24-7. And within the first year, doing the calculations for them, they're saving anywhere from 50 to 60 thousand which over a five-year period is is a lot as we see how things are trending in the the energy world now you know we're, we're always looking at options for our our customers and in germany is always coming out with newer technology that makes it better on our customers down the road costs and all that i know that flotweg equipment comes with a lot of instrumentation i hear some of your customers when i go into plants talk about how they just have to push a button they set their settings and they just push a button and go 
And it's this a really simple equipment to use because of this instrumentation. And I think you mentioned earlier something about the SIMP drive. And I know that's an innovative technology that's come from Flotweg. Can you tell us a little bit about that? SIMP gears and, and, and everything on the units, just even from how our control engineers set everything up. Everything is simplified to make it easier on our end users or our customers so that, like you said, it's just they come in and, and push the button and it runs. Yeah. I, I talked to one of Flotweg's end users and I can't remember now which industry, of course, Flotweg serves a variety of industries, really every industry that's out there just about can use this separation technology. And I remember talking to one end user who said that Previously, they ha- had to actually pay a person to sit and babysit the equipment. This was before they got the flatwing equipment in. And it was a, a different supplier of this separation technology. And now with the flatwing equipment, with the instrumentation that's there, and you can type in all the settings, and then they don't have to pay someone to sit there and babysit the machine anymore. And that means a lot. That is a huge cost savings. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's, um, and, w- and once our process technicians have started up the machine and, and everything's running, there really is not much that they need to even touch or change unless something has changed in their process. You yeah. Know, I think that you- automation is something that's really making a difference in manufacturing right now. You're really seeing a lot more of this automation that's so futuristic and you know, we've got robots everywhere and yeah. and the machines are thinking for themselves and all this machine learning. And it's, it's really fascinating what's going on out there. Yeah. We offer a flexi package, which basically they can monitor the machines while they're in operation from a cell phone or any PC. It's, you know, it's a nice feature to have, especially plant when you're kind of all over the place and alarms start going off in one area. It's, it's nice to have that feature uh, you know, on your phone that you can see what's going on. Yeah, that's absolutely. And as we talk about the future of manufacturing, which is the whole point of this podcast, do you think that most companies out there are effectively preparing for the future? And if not, well, why not? Here at Flot, like, we're, like, we're always actively coming up with new ideas and, and focusing on the future, right? That's, um, I believe everyone is doing that or should be doing that, especially from everything that we've gone through in 2020. Um, yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's been a, a crazy year. In a, in a I think tw- 2020 has forced us to use more automation and more technology. I agree, yeah, 100%. Flatwick, we'd rolled out what our game plan was before COVID and everything hit. There was a game plan for 2025, which was, it was nice. We already had a plan in place before everything happened here in 2020. Right, so right. I believe that if those companies didn't have a game plan in place, it's, you know, it's struggling and make thing, making things harder on them now. Yeah. I mean, those changes and adjustments are just part of the game. I mean, it's kind of like if we go back to our sports analogy and talk about hockey, sometimes you have to make decisions on the fly and adjustments on the fly and go with it <laughs> and yeah absolutely i mean that's yeah exactly like you said the game of hockey it's such a fast-paced game that everything changes but if you don't have a structure and system before the game it, it you can make the game a lot harder on yourself as a team and that's you know here at Flatway, we have that structure and system in place and and obviously we, we continue to work at it make make things better every day and that's why Flatway um north america is where it's at today yeah, that's that's really good to hear. And I think that's a great point to make. And I, I just I'm having so much fun with this conversation. And I just want to thank you so much for being here with us and sharing all your knowledge and expertise. But I also want to give you the last word. So is there anything else that you can tell us about what you're seeing as the future of the aftermarket? the aftermarket it's it's a critical component for our future especially with a lot of our customers because they're those are essential customers and it's it's everyday life that revolves around what our equipment's being used for it's important that we keep these customers and, and plants going because it's something that if that stops or slows down or, or goes the other way that affects everybody in the world and it's it's important we just keep the wheel turning and, and everything moving forward so yeah. we can continue on with our everyday life. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And and it sounds to me like this is one of the big reasons that Flotweg made this investment in this Canadian aftermarket 
launch. As I said in the opening, Flotweg just built this huge aftermarket services plant at, uh, I guess, a facility close to the Toronto airport. And this is it's kind of modeled after what you guys are doing in North America, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it, and it was at the right time because, as you know, with everything with COVID and travel, it would have made things a lot worse and harder for us to continue what we're doing for our customers as far as providing that service for them. And we've really continued to grow in Canada. And I think that's why we did. The company had decided that we need to provide that the same for our Canadian customers as we are here in the U.S. It's definitely great that we have that available up there now and, and sure came at the right time with everything going on. Yeah. And I'll correct myself. It's modeled after what you're doing in the U.S. I mean, this is an expansion of your North American aftermarket group. It's really exciting that this is now in the same aftermarket services are available now in Canada. So it's a little bit closer to home for them, but the same services, the same kind of services that you offer in the U.S. So that's, I think, really cool and really interesting. Here in the U.S., we it's, I think everywhere is trying to model out what we've done here. So it, it's a nice base that we have here in the U.S. for our Canadian facility to model after. Yeah, I think that's true. It's a good model. And it's interesting, too, that in these uncertain times with COVID, and we talked about that briefly, a lot of companies are pulling back and not making an investment in the future. And it's nice to see that even during those uncertain times, that companies like Flatwick are investing in the future by creating new facilities to focus on things like aftermarket and maintenance and service. That's definitely an important step toward the future for your company. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, well, thanks so much again for being here and giving giving us your time and giving us your experience and your insight. And I just want to take one more opportunity to tell the listeners a little bit more about Flatwick. A simple glass of water, just about 200 milliliters. What do you think? How long could you survive on it? A couple of hours? A day? Two days? Perhaps three? Think about it. As the world population increases, drinking water becomes something extremely vital for more and more people. This means that the treatment and purification of wastewater is becoming increasingly paramount. One of the key technologies in this field comes from Floatvig. Our team's motivation comes from an awareness that it is they who keep our modern lives in motion through their work. Be this through efficient solutions for oil recovery, plastics recycling, or the production of biofuels. This is why every single one of us gives everything we have every day to always achieve the best possible result. When in contact with customers all over the world and when sharing ideas for solutions with colleagues. Such personal bonds, along with a sincere sense of responsibility, make the work here something very special. Continual learning is as much an integral part of our corporate culture as is our genuine interest for understanding the individual needs of different industries. This philosophy has positioned Floatvig among the top producers of decanters, separators, and belt presses for more than 60 years. These separation solutions provide Floatvig's partners with a decisive competitive advantage. This is reflected in higher economic efficiency, maximum performance, outstanding process safety with unwavering reliability or simply in a glass of clean drinking water. Floatvig, engineered for your success. This brings us to the end of the show. Thank you so much for listening. Please do me a favor and subscribe, rate, and review the podcast on iTunes. If you have interesting information to share and want to contact me about being a guest on a future episode of this podcast, please send me an email at michelle at navigatecontent.com. You can also send me questions that I will have my expert guests answer for you on a future episode. And in the meantime, please check out my book series on modern manufacturing, 
to read more than 30 real-world case studies about how global companies are using smart technology and innovation to build the factory of the future. All the links to the books and articles mentioned in this podcast are in the show notes. Have a great week and please join me for the next episode of Factory of the Future. Uh